love to speak internationally quite a bit, and I was in Birmingham in England doing obviously a British audience, and I did this specific presentation to them, and um, this woman was doing this. Now, I don't normally do Q&A, but she looked like a flipping football fan sitting in the front, so I said to her, I'm sorry, you have a question. Now, her brain was so fried that I would use the word sex in a corporate presentation that she even cocked up her question. I know what she meant to ask, but this is what came out of her mouth. How would you use sex in a corporate environment? <laughs> of course, this opened the door for me. <laughs> so while well, I hear the boardroom table's nice, <laughs> the photocopier leaves a memory. <laughs> Be careful. She says, no, I mean, I said, I know what you bloody mean. I was um, at the Wild Coast, and for my sins, I had some Americans in the audience, and the, some American young woman found herself standing at my unmarked rental car 40 minutes after the gig. Stalker. She says to me, hi, Galvin. Don't you love that American accent? Whenever I hear a Yank speak, my first thought, do you want some cheese with that wine? <laughs> she says to me, hi, Gavin. I'm a 27-year-old emancipated woman. I saw your presentation and I was offended. <laughs> you seem to think the only purpose a woman has on this planet is to sexually please a man and I'm offended. <laughs> I leaned forward, grabbed her by her elbow, and said to her, Sweetie, you have more issues than Reader's Digest. <laughs> she got this confused look on her face. I walked away, I left her standing there, probably thinking, I don't even subscribe to Reader's Digest. <laughs> but it did get me thinking, perhaps there are people who don't understand what I do. You see, I'm not a comedian. What I am is a humorist. A humorist is a person who tries to use humor to talk about very serious subjects. For instance, instead of speaking about relationships like that, what I could have done is put up the proper slides like that. I could have stood up on a stage with a three-piece suit and a podium and done the Harvard Review, the MBA interpretation of relationship marketing. If you can't come to work every single day and your core fundamental belief system is, I am here today to build relationships, to connect people, and to make sure that I help people grow. If that's not your core and you don't believe it, guess what? This is not the place for you to be working. If you don't back your products and your staff and your people, and you don't live the purpose, guess what? There is no way that you belong here. But how many people do go to work every single day? and actually love what they do and love their organizations and believe that they are there for a reason, they have a purpose? Or is it just a whole bunch of tasks that we do every day and if we do enough tasks by five o'clock we can go home and do what we really want to do? You see, it's about relationship marketing. Every single time you spend time, you show a kindness, you solve a problem. Every single time you give great service and you connect with people, it's almost like this emotional banking account that you constantly open up and you put credits. So when tough times happen, these people, they don't even wait. They want to support you. They want to be around you. Why? Because you have credit in that relationship banking account. Does this make sense? But I thought to myself, how on earth, how on earth are we going to do that with our customers when we can't even do that with our husbands, our kids, and our family? When we can't be there for the netball game? When we can't be there for the graduation? When we can't take the time to test them on their homework for the exam tomorrow because we're always too busy. You see, here's my lesson again. If you can't do this stuff at home, you will never do this stuff at work.